In our final video lesson on Chapter 14, the Citric Acid Cycle, we want to examine the TCA cycle intermediates as well as citrate transport. Let's first consider the benefits of the cyclic nature of the pathway alluded to in an earlier lesson. Remember it's a central pathway and provides key intermediates for both anabolic and catabolic pathways. Therefore, we need a constant supply of those metabolites. It is the cyclic nature of the pathway that provides us with those metabolites. In other words, the pathway is self-perpetuating so we have that constant supply we need. In the illustration on our slide, we have illustrated the fact that these intermediates are often precursors for anabolic pathways. For instance, heme is generated from the precursor succinyl-CoA. Malate is used to generate pyruvate, and we learned in Chapter 13 that through gluconeogenesis we can convert oxaloacetate to glucose. Citrate, the first product in our pathway, is used in the synthesis of fatty acids and cholesterol, and alpha-ketoglutarate is a key precursor for synthesizing several amino acids and nucleotides, as we'll see in Chapter 18. Let's just look at one of these reactions. We can convert alpha-ketoglutarate to the amino acid glutamate. This is a reductive amination reaction. The amine group highlighted in blue is added to the carbonyl carbon, and that carbon is also reduced. Therefore, we're oxidizing NADH. As you can see, through the double arrows, this is a readily reversible reaction. So we can either form the amino acid glutamate or readily convert that back to alpha-ketoglutarate. Let's next look at the citrate transport system. In this system, citrate and pyruvate can cross the mitochondrial membrane through specific transport proteins, like the transport proteins we examined in Chapter 9. On the left of our figure, we can convert pyruvate to oxaloacetate, and of course oxaloacetate will feed into the citric acid cycle. To this we add acetyl-CoA to form citrate. Citrate then moves through its transporter from the matrix to the cytosol. It is converted back to oxaloacetate, and the acetyl-CoA that is liberated in that process is used in lipid biosynthesis. Oxaloacetate can then, through two steps, be converted back to pyruvate, and pyruvate through its transporter is moved back into the matrix. In other words, we have essentially here a shuttle system that moves acetyl-CoA units from the matrix to the cytosol, and that acetyl-CoA is used in lipid biosynthesis, as we'll examine in Chapter 17. If we use the intermediates of the pathway as precursors for anabolic pathways, then we're siphoning off those intermediates. And if we don't replenish them, the pathway will shut down. And so we need side reactions to replenish those intermediates. These are referred to as anaplerotic reactions. The Greek literally means to fill up. You can consider each of these steps in the pathway as containing a bucket that will fill up with the intermediate. If we keep pouring out the buckets for other side reactions, for other pathways, catabolic and anabolic, then we're going to need to fill the bucket back up if we want to keep this TCA cycle going. One example is the pyruvate carboxylase reaction, which you may remember from gluconeogenesis. Pyruvate is carboxylated to form oxaloacetate in this process of gluconeogenesis, but also oxaloacetate is one of the intermediates in our cycle. Remember, on anaplerotic reactions are separate from the TCA cycle. They simply provide us with more of the intermediates we need to keep the cycle going. This concludes our studies in Chapter 14. We'll begin our next video lesson with a consideration of Chapter 15. We want to see what parameter predicts the flow of electrons down the electron transport chain and see how that relates to a change in free energy.